Hey everybody, Chuck here. Made a little bit of progress on the track vehicle and I thought I'd stop. If you're taking baby steps along with me, um, you might, might want to know the measurements and some of the other critical information. <laughs> Never critical, I guess. Don't sweat the petty stuff and it's all petty stuff, right? Center frame here, let's talk about that. Doing everything according to the differential, building the frame to the differential where it is, and thus, if you're using the quarter, one and a quarter inch tubing like I am, pillow block bearings, so forth, this comes out to six and three eighths inches. Keeps things nice and tight. Of course, in the back, six and three eighths, six and three eighths inches as well. If you might notice something here, pillow block bearings, I had them pointed forward before, both of them, but I didn't like it. Collar here, and then have the collar inside, and it just wouldn't be completely symmetrical that kind of stuff bugs me so I did switch the pillow block bearing it may be a little tougher to get grease into it I'm not sure exactly what kind of engine stand I'm going to go for this time this one I used one inch square tubing put four pillars it's held up real well but I might go with something a little bit different and try to avoid the frame maybe go over the edge of the frame and back under I'm not exactly sure plus I can go a little bit lower one thing I wanted to make sure, and I'll tell you about that in a minute, I wanted to make sure this is braced real close to the sprocket. I wanted to get some bracing in there. I think that's the problem I had with my broken differential. I'm going to do a part B on that in a minute. Here's my new sprocket. My 41-pitch sprocket finally came in from Staten or Statenincorporated.com. It's a 41-pitch, 30-tooth by 5-8 by TTN. Um, I like it. I like everything but the price. I like the way it, let's see, where are we at here? Oh, man, getting tired. There we go. A lot beefier than my 35 pitch originally. Everything's 41 now because of the Go Power Sports Series 40 torque converter. It uses a 41 pitch sprocket with the 420 DID chain, a motorcycle chain, which is a great upgrade. So, got my new sprocket, plus it slips right over the axle differential with no problem. As we talked about last time, uh, I ground off the webbing on my other one, so this sprocket, which is only two inches, would fit. These things are expensive, 37 bucks, but they come pre-drilled and you don't have to mess with grinding that stuff down. Let's go look at this differential while we're talking about it. I want to do a quick update on the differential because I think I figured out what really went wrong. If you saw my last video, you can see where I ground down this stuff. I told you about that. That probably wasn't the best thing for it. But I don't think that's the only problem. Spider gears look really good. Uh, the internal gear looks really good. They look like brand new. There's no problem with it. The only problem I could see is that I know these things come packed with uh, grease. Um, they come from the factory like that. You don't have to service them. They're full of grease. And there's hardly any in there. That gives me an indication that this might have been broken for quite a long time because the grease could have come out and I wouldn't know it. Um, everything was bolted in together real good and it was, you know, I didn't know it was broken until I took it apart. But I want to tell you why. Help maybe you can avoid... Uh, my mistakes, my dad told me a long time ago, learn from other people's mistakes because you don't got time to learn from your own. And I put this piece of square tubing in here anyway so you can see the difference between the bracing back there. You notice the difference right there real good? And if you're really looking sharp over to the left of your screen, you'll see about three-eighths of an inch on this, about an eighth inch there, and flush there. This is where the housing was broken right here on this side. The differential sat here, the housing was on this side, and this is the one that was broken. And I just believe it's because there was a lot of weight and so forth. And this wasn't even supported originally. This was an afterthought. The diagonals were afterthoughts. Um, there was no nothing in the middle here at all supporting it. And it just from the banging and me just tagging stuff together like I do, it absolutely bent the frame and put the stress on that uh, aluminum housing. So I'm going to try to avoid that. I suggest we all avoid that by putting plenty of bracing on, on the frame. So that's why we're doing that. Six and three-eighths here, six and three-eighths in the back, and 
that's a good start. Not sure where the next one's going to go because there's a chain from your jack shaft and you got to get that all mounted with your engine stand and you got to miss your chain. But it wears, as soon as I can, man, I'm going to put another brace in there and I'll put multiple braces along here and try to keep that thing from flexing at all. Hope that makes sense. All right, let's quickly go over here to the track. I made a little progress. I kind of mocked things up here to see where the track would run. Of course, I'm knocking things over the all over the place. There we go. Put the piece of flat stock on there. That signifies the bottom of the upper side of the track. I want to see where it ran um, because I want to run it as parallel to the track supports as I can. My other track vehicle, I had 5-inch sprockets, plus I had them up way up higher because when I first got that first track, it just didn't seem to bend real good. And I, and I just didn't feel like cranking the idler, the adjuster way out because, you know, I just didn't, I didn't know. Um, so we had a big hump in there and it, this one anyway, I learned that you can really stretch the tracks out and I'm going to run it perfectly flat. Well, that's going to drop things lower and I got to make sure I miss my rails with my upper idlers. I'm going to have idlers front and back just like I did that one over there. So in doing so, um, these are a little wider than my other idlers, because I can't find the other kind. Inch and a quarter, an inch and a quarter is uh, two and a half inches. So I got two and a half inches there, and on my track guides over here, look at this tracks, pretty cool. I have two and a half inches from the outside of the track guide to the outside of the track guide, two and a half inches. So that's five inches, and if my wheels, my idlers are got to drop low to match that track, then I've got to have these rails at least more than five inches. As soon as I determine that, I can make my braces. Let's say it's five and a half, five and a half, five and a half, whatever. Then I can come back here. It'll be the same on the other side, of course. And then we can figure out where we're going in the center. We can, wherever, wherever it lies, we'll just cut the brackets and braces and we'll weld those in. So that's how we get the basic dimension of the whole frame. hope that makes sense to you. The last thing I want to talk about is the idler wheel here. This is a number 043511. I try to give you parts numbers and information about it. That one is a snowmobile. It's called a, uh, a little whip and it's a scorpion. I found out, <laughs> I went to the snowmobile graveyard on my other one and I found these sprockets, excuse me, the idler wheels that I like, the take-up wheels, and I liked them because most of the wheels are really skinny and these were three quarters and they kind of flare out to an inch and that's exactly what the track guides are inside is an inch. So I really liked these over here. But I didn't know what they were, I had to do some research. But they're really hard to find, number one. Number two, they don't have replaceable bearings. So that's a couple strikes. Yeah, the big one is you can't find them. And these are starting to get a little war. They were used when I got them, and all those wheelies and stuff. In truth, they probably go a long time like that, but other option is to think about, folks. I may just go with two uh, take-up bogies on the back here. Eliminate the one. Find a couple snowmobile ones that are about six inches or so. There's a lot of those snowmobile bogies that are really thin with replaceable bearings. And get two of them, put one on the outside of the track guides. Instead of one in the middle, put two. Then you'd have double the strength, plus you'd have replaceable bearings. Unfortunately, like I said, I already got this brand new old stock take up bogey already, so I'll probably use that, but I'm certainly going to be in the back of my mind using double bogeys on the back. Okay, I'm trying to think. I think that's about all we got for now. Little bite-sized chunks, and we'll get on it, and as soon as we get some more of the frame done and get this figured out, we'll put another video up. Hope you're having fun. I always like to say God bless you, because we could all use as much of God's blessing as we could possibly get in the day and age we're living Thanks a bunch, you guys. Uh, catch you next time.